because people yes. were coming and you didn't have room for them. And That's then right. we were deprived of our meeting hall. And that, so for a year, you really went through it. I mean, we talked about this again and again and again. You needed room for children. You needed room for the people that were coming. And God was moving in a mighty way. And people were very excited Friday after Friday. And then it happened. God opened a door for you to use a new facility. But you know, that doesn't mean that it's going to be a bigger crowd. People get like emotionally attached to a building. So it really is a step of faith when you change venues, whether the people are going to follow you. So right. tell the people a little bit about what happened that opened this door for you. And then uh, the miracle God did for you. We were knocking down doors, Mario, all around the city, trying to find a church or somebody that would allow us to use a bigger space. And if anybody's ever done this before, you'll know that is not an easy thing. A lot of churches will not open their building to another church. And so we've been searching, we've been searching. One day I was driving in Hendersonville, which is the next town over. It's a little bit closer to Nashville proper. And I felt the Holy Spirit uh, say, go in and ask that building. You know, there's a, there's a church that will let you use their facility. So we reached out to them. They got back to us. And over the course of the last few months, we've been talking to them. They opened their doors to us. And uh, it's a large church. It's, it has the capacity to actually fit up to about 500 people. So it's pretty large. And, uh, you know, here we go. We're going to move from Gallatin to Hendersonville, which is about 15 minutes. And to your point, uh, we didn't know if the folks were going to come. I mean, we figured a lot of them would, but we never know. Like you said, it's always a kind of an interesting thing where you make a move. Well, we opened the service last week. It was the grand opening. And Mario, I, I attributed to a sign and a wonder from God that we had double, more than double of the seating capacity in this building. And every seat, for the most part, was full. In fact, Look at we that. Had to bring out some, yeah, we had to Look bring out that. some seats from, uh, from the back. And so uh, I really believe it's the Lord showing uh, faithfulness to us for obedience and just following what he said to do. And, to, you know, this is like a stationary revival meeting on Friday night in Nashville. We were looking at it like a tent crusade almost, like, you know, where miracles, signs, and wonders are taking place and I believe it's a destination where not just the folks from this city are gonna come to, but people are coming from other places. We had people from Florida, we had people from Washington, uh, we had people from all around the country that said we wanted to be there for the grand opening of this. So I believe the Lord's up to something. And the key is just like what you do at the Tank Crusade, Mario, is allowing the Holy Spirit to move and for us to really get out of the way. And we believe that God is still in the miracle working business. And uh, I wanna share after you share some more uh, what the Lord did the other day when I was driving because it was so powerful and it just kind of goes along with the story. Well, I'm not going to let you get away with waiting. I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to ask you a question. Then I want you to get okay. into that. Legally, I mean, be real now. Legally, what was the seating capacity legally of the facility you were in in Gallatin? How many seats? We, we, we weren't supposed to go over a hundred, you know, and it was a humble 100. space. Yes, sir. Okay, you went from one hundred. To 500? Well, 500 could fit in this room. Right now, we have about 275 seats out there, and, and they were full. So and you, and you had to add extra seats after that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, that, that's, uh, you don't go from 100 to 500 like that. You don't do that. That's not the way it happens. Something is up. There's a move of God going on in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and it is a move of God. And uh, any of you that are out there that have been wondering, and I have, because it's very difficult to find a Christian gathering in the Nashville area that's on fire. Uh, and I guess that's true nationally. And I'm not saying they don't exist. It's just very hard to find them. So that step of faith was remarkable because that's five times the size of what you had before. And you had a great turnout. So what happened while you were driving, Todd? Tell the people. I think this is very important. Well, this goes along with what we're going to discuss tonight because, you know, I've been someone, as you have, Mario, that's been sounding the alarm, sometimes even a voice in the wilderness, uh, a watchman concerned about many of the things that are happening in our nation, our world. But I was driving and I felt the Holy Spirit just fall. I wasn't even in deep prayer or anything. And, and I just felt this peace that came over me. And the Lord gave me a vision for the next three years. And I believe we're going to see a massive harvest. You have seen this. 
uh, over the possibilities when you're looking in the natural and the, and the many wicked plans the World Economic Forum has, Klaus Schwab has. I mean, you know, we could just go on and on with the globalists and what they're doing to President Trump. But what I found is, as I've been seeking the face of the Lord, and I attribute this to the scripture in 2 Chronicles 7.14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and then it says, and seek my face. And I, I believe that we have been, as a family, seeking God's face, and you have, Mario, as well, and many that are watching, in this season. And there's something that happens when you seek the face of the Lord. The Lord draws more near to you, because as you draw near to him, he draws near to you. And I felt such a peace come on me in the car. And, and I just heard the Lord say, all that you can see is good news. You know, just look at the good news. And then I started thinking about what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. And so to what you said in the beginning of the show, yes, we are watchmen. We are definitely going to be speaking about the things that are happening. We call a spade a spade. We call out demonic things. You know, we understand and discern the times that we're in. But there's something about being in the presence of the Lord and having this peace and being a soul winner and be, getting in the stream of the Holy Spirit. And, and here's how I'll just end this. You could, we could be over here and focused on what the devil's up to, or we could be over here and focused on what the Holy Spirit is up to. And when we get focused on what the Holy Spirit is up to, I believe the favor and the blessing of the Lord. And this, this happens in our job, in our families, in our finances. Look, I believe some folks that are watching this broadcast are going to have the best year of their life. I believe that there's going to be your relatives, your sons and daughters that you've been praying for, the prodigals, are going to start coming home in this season. You're going to see answers to your prayers. And so what the Lord showed me, it's such a simple message, but he just said, look at the good news. And, and, I, and you know, he said, focus on what's pure, focus on what's righteous, focus on what's holy. That's what the Bible says. And so, Mario, this was just a huge revelation. I know it's a very simplistic message, but if we stay in tune with the Holy Spirit, there's good news out there. You know, I, I really want to build on this for a second. We have two schools of thought that are very radical in the body of Christ. Gloom and doom. And everything is fine. It's all in God's hands. We virtually don't have to do anything. All right. There is an element of truth in both of these schools of thought. But it reminds me of an old saying that goes like this. It is not either or, but both and more. So let's look at this. There is gloom and doom, Todd. There is. And you, yeah. you and I both address it. We don't. We're not afraid. You come on firepower. You're going to hear what's going on with Biden. You're going to hear what's going on in our schools, at our border. Anything that affects you and the people you love, you're going to hear about it on this show. And we don't hold back. And that's why we often quote Acts 4, 23, where the disciples, after they were arrested, it says, and they shared with the people all that the Sanhedrin had said, the entire threat. So you're not going to hear us sugarcoat the truth. It's bad out there. Our cities are rotting. Our nation is on the verge of destruction. We've got terrorists coming over the border. What we're trying to tell you is not that those things aren't true, but that they don't count. And that's a big difference. Like uh, Todd, for example, there is good news, and God is moving right. in a mighty way. I don't think that the disciples lived in denial, Todd. I don't believe they yeah. lived in a denial that said there aren't uh, Nero's, there aren't persecution, but it didn't matter to them because what God was doing was so much bigger in their life. You know, it's exciting to lay hands on the sick. It's exciting right. to cast out devils. It's exciting to win a soul. It's exciting to raise the dead. It's exciting to be in the middle of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit to receive prophetic words, to receive insight from God that the church is getting. It is not that we deny that these bad things are happening. It's that they don't count against the backdrop of what the Holy Spirit has said. So I want to read a verse, Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The times are bad. We're not going to deny that. We're not going to lie about it. But they're not worthy of robbing your joy. They're not worthy of stealing your hope. And they're not worthy of stopping your dream, which is where we're going to go next. Because I'm about to make a big announcement. But before I do, comment on what I've just said, Todd. Yeah, you know, Mario, I think what's happening is God is getting the end time warrior prepared in their mind and their heart for where we're about to go. 
God is showing us and teaching us, look, know these things. Don't be one of these preachers and people that don't say anything. Know it, understand it, know how to pray against it, you know, know how to pull down the strongholds, know the battle that you're in, be bold, you know, all these things, very, very important. But don't live in that place. And then when I start thinking is when he says you're in it, but you're not of it, that's what he's talking about. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And so how was Paul able to find such a peace when he was locked up in a prison? How was Paul able to write some of these scriptures when he was in a, in one of the worst situations possible? And yet he's saying, I counted joy to live as Christ, to die as gain. Why, why was he able to do that? Because Paul got uh, an understanding of, of the battle of the mind, of living a transformed life instead of a conformed life. And he understands that being transformed, the transformed mindset applies in all areas in every situation. And so as we understand our identity in Jesus Christ, in the times that we're in, and we started, this is the biggest discipline. If you can, if we can figure this out, Mario, this is going to be golden. To, to know how to have peace that passes understanding when there is a major event in the world. Say, there, say there's another war that takes place. Say there's a big cyber attack. How are we as Christians going to be able to trust in the Lord with all of our heart? Because ever since the beginning of time, God has been looking for a people that will trust him. And so what, what if we are that generation of believers? And what if that's why God brought us in the world at this time? So that we would trust God no matter what's going on. And I think so, there's something to this, Mario, because there's no one that could put it better than what you just said. Because there's, there's some over here that's right. There's some over here that's right. How do we take the best of both and get in alignment with the Scripture and the Holy Spirit and become that end-time warrior? Well, I'll tell you how. <laughs> there's, a, there's a parable uh, and it's in this story and it doesn't apply contextually. It's not something I'm going to say is in the scripture because it's not. But what is the difference between a good friend and a best friend? We'll show you and uh, something. And I want to quote the verse, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So let's watch this now. What is the difference between a good friend and a best friend? Well, a good friend is someone you can call at three o'clock in the morning and they'll bail you out of jail. But a best friend is sitting in the cell next to you saying, wasn't that fun? Now, <laughs> I'm not espousing crime here. I'm not espousing rebellion or illegal activity. But what I'm telling you is that the apostles had joy. Now, when do you need strength? Really, think about it. When do you need strength? You're the marathon runner and you've been running for hours and you see the finish line. That's when you need strength. When you see someone insult you and you keep your, your mouth from saying something stupid or giving in to anger, that's when you need strength. When it's dark and impossible, that's when you need strength. So how can the Bible get away with saying the joy of the Lord is your strength? That means that you're supposed to have joy in a very awkward place and in an awkward situation. You know, uh, when... Martin Luther was attacked by the devil multiple times. The one that he ended up doing was he got past rebuking him and started laughing at him. And when there's something about the devil being laughed at that he literally can't take it. Now, I'm not talking about a disrespectful, mindless, immature laughter. I'm talking about a holy laughter. And when right. the devil faces that, he is ridiculed. So here it is. Things are bad, but God is better. Things are dangerous, but in God we have safety. And Paul repeatedly said, we were cast down, but not forsaken. We were abandoned, but God was always with us. And it taught us to rely on him above everything else. So when I told that story about your best friend is sitting in the cell next to you, I believe that Paul was so wrapped up in the wonder of that moment in the road to Damascus, when that light shone and answered the question of his life, he knew where he was born. The reality of Jesus so transfixed him that nothing he would face later could ever tarnish that image. And he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I was not. And that's why I think it's important today that when you listen to a preacher who says everything is rosy, never talks about what's going on in the world, then here's what they're telling you. Christianity's too weak. Christianity is too soft. Christianity can't stand. So I have to be like that parent who doesn't let their child ever understand or shield from anything real. 
And instead of being a protection, it makes them subject to every kind of sickness and discouragement there is. They have no immunity. They have no defense mechanism. They have no strength. The real Christian of this hour understands everything that's going on in the world and then says with conviction, God is in control and God is going to find a way and I'm going to attack the devil every chance I get. That's right. The the Christian of today that you're talking about understands the spiritual battle that we're in and uses the spiritual weapons that we have. You know, for a long time, the devil's been trying to make it like spiritual warfare is even a thing. You know, a lot of people don't even talk about it. I went to seminary. They barely even talked about it. You know, uh, it, it, it's something that we have to learn in the school of hard knocks. You know, when you're living out the Christian life, you know, and you're maybe the Lord starts expanding the territories and all of a sudden you start getting hit. From every different direction. I tell people now, if I'm not dealing with spiritual warfare, I get concerned, Mario, because the truth is, is when you when you're taking the territory and you're doing what the Lord's called you to do and you're walking in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, of course, there's going to be warfare. But here's the thing. It's like Neo in the Matrix. You ever see that movie, uh, The Matrix? You know, at first he's dealing with all these agents and everything. But when he starts realizing the power that he has, all of a sudden it becomes like nothing. He's just sitting here, you know, dealing with these. It's the same battle, the same warfare, the same agents. But all of a sudden he understands the tools that he has available to him. And I believe this is what God is doing. When he, when the Lord says that when the enemy comes in a flood, like a flood, he raises up a standard. This is what he's doing right now. He's raising up a standard for the, for the remnant or, the, you know, whatever you want to call the, the true body of Christ, the ecclesia, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those that are in their prayer closets, those that are in the word of God that have a personal relationship with Jesus, those of you that are watching. You know, when, when he's speaking to you, he's giving you direction and you're up against different things at your job, with your family, you know, crazy things that happen out of nowhere. I call it like the game of whack-a-mole. You know, it's like one thing, you know, yep. goes down then another thing. But the deal is, is when the enemy comes in like a flood like that, you you now know because you're battle hearted, you're battle tested. You've already been through this in this season. So now it's like, Neo, like, yeah, you know, I'll deal with some warfare, but, and that's what it is. And in, in that place, you learn to find the peace and the joy. And I'm going to tell you, you want to make some devils mad? You walk around smiling with the joy of the Holy Spirit. You'll see some people get real mad. But it's a peace that comes over you, and nothing can nothing can change it. And and I just I, that's what I feel, Mario, in this season. It's just God is moving in such a mighty way. I mean, we just talked about two testimonies. We're going to get more into what he's doing at the tent. And, you know, yes. when you see people getting out of wheelchairs. When you see people, I can't wait to show your trailer in a few minutes because when you see the tangible miracles that are happening, and I, I'm just going to tell people because Mario won't tell you this, but this man is a general in the faith that has had tremendous warfare. I know him personally. I know his family. And Mario, you have stood. You stand, and 90% of the time, people don't even know what it is that you're going through. And you get up there on that platform, and you speak truth, and people get healed. And that, that is the, the way that, you know, that's a true example of what we can do to see this presence of the Lord move in a meeting in our life and in the ministry. Perfect. Now I want to tell you, you're right. I've been through the darkness, folks. I, I've despaired of my life here several times. And that's why I, I don't want us to give you the impression that you're going to just wing it and get through. No, this is deadly serious business, this thing of victory and joy. It's deadly serious. And I'm making an announcement. And by the way, this is the first time, Todd, that I've publicly uh, shared what I'm about to share. We've done, This is like yep. we're premiering this. And I've thought about whether do it or not. The, yeah, I, there were a lot of opportunities to do it on other uh, other programs. But but this is the moment. When Noah built the ark, nobody believed it was going to rain. I'm going to tell you, sometimes God will speak to people in history, certainly in the Bible, that goes completely against the grain. And one time C.S. Lewis said this. He said, when everyone is heading toward a cliff, those who are walking away from the cliff look like they're insane. And what I'm going to tell you can make me look like I'm insane, but I'm not. And I'm going to tell you what's going on. Mario Murillo Ministries, and you'll see it beginning in the month of June, the first day of June. You'll, you'll be getting a public picture and announcement and a full color analysis of what's going on. 
we are about to exponentially increase in size as a ministry. We are building a national soul winning machine that is going to cost us millions and millions of dollars. <clears throat> the phase that we've just finished, where none of you have received an appeal letter from us because we rarely, if ever, do that. We pray it in. Now, I don't, I'm not against asking, and I will in the future have appeal letters, but I want you to know what we're building here outside of Lafayette, Tennessee, just not far from where Gallatin is in Tennessee, on several acres of ground, we are building a massive soul winning machine. It'll be able to do things we've never thought was possible. Now, let me show you a slide of the first phase of what it is. We've just finished a 20,000 square foot warehouse. You notice that there are four doors on one side and there's a matching four doors on the other side. These are designed for semi trucks to pull in and pull out. Here is what we're building and let's leave that slide up. We're building a quick strike center where we are capable of doing tent crusades in half the amount of time that we're doing them now. We're going to easily next year double the number of crusades. Now watch, they're not only going to double in number, but to double in size. So inside of this building, there will be pre-packed tents, chairs, lights, stages, and an intricate storage system that will allow us to be a quick strike ministry that can go to a city. Whether we're invited or uninvited, we're going to be able to set up and simultaneously have crusades going that are going to begin to reach millions of people. Now, secondly, we've bought a very important piece of media equipment. And the important thing here, folks, all of this is already paid for in cash. This building has is being completed and there's no debt on the land or on the building. And this is just phase one. This is the first building. So let's look at the next picture. This is a media video trailer that is state of the art. This is like what the NFL has, folks. And now we have it. And what's going to happen is in our tent crusades, we are now Firepower and Mario Murillo Ministries and Todd Coconado Ministries are going to be on multiple Christian media platforms and people will be able to see us. There's even one secular media platform that is negotiating with us for Firepower and for our Crusades to be streamed live. This is going to be for a five camera shoot right here. So uh, let me show you now just a, a short video and then you and I are going to talk about the studio that we're building besides the mobile one that's in this trailer. So let's show that last video there. This is the inside. Under, this is way long ago in the early state of construction. You see those, all of that, and then it'll stop right there. Now, where you see all those uh, framing and it's gone way beyond this now, this is an old pic video. That's a 3,000 square foot television studio that will have three separate sets. And the main one will be the newsroom where Firepower is filmed live. We've got room for people to come and sit in there while we're filming Firepower. We have two other sets. And then to the left will be offices in the brain center for distributing products and doing all kinds of things. Anyway, what I want you to know is this. We're moving to where firepower will be filmed inside of that building. And Todd and I will be together in the same studio. It's all happening and it's going to reach millions of people. And so, Todd, what do you think about what you just saw? It's uh, a sign and wonder, kind of what I was saying about the Friday night. I don't think any of this stuff could be happening without the favor of the Lord on it, Mario. Do you feel what I feel, brother? Do you feel like here's where we're going against the grain? Millions yes, of people yeah. want Jesus in America. And ministries are hunkering down. They're getting that bomb shelter mentality. Woe is me. It's not going to work. We are going up. And I'm going to tell you one more thing. And I want you to comment on this. We don't have a right 
to call a city a closed door. Only God right. has that power to say that. So when people tell me, oh, these doors are closed, we went to New York, we went to San Francisco, we went to the cities that nobody said could ever be reached, and God began to reach people. The 99, where we're still committed to, it, it couldn't have been reached. And Todd, so comment on that. Do you think there's a harvest of souls happening right now? Well, here, here's a prime example. Uh, we don't even have a footprint in Austin, you know, really uh, just for whatever reason, the Lord said, go to Austin. So we put out a fleece. We're going to Austin. Mario, we're up to like 900 people that have signed up for this thing in Austin. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, and so we've had to get three bigger rooms in San Marcos. We're going there on April 13th. Uh, this is the Lord. And so what it is, is is hunger to your point. People are so hungry. And, you know, here's here's the, the, the mentality that I have now is, you know what, it couldn't be a better future for us being raptured out of here, you know, living, ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ for all eternity. There, there's no possible better outcome for us than that. God is so good that he's given us the absolute best outcome. So in the meantime, why don't we go out standing and occupying and doing what the Lord said to do? And I, I believe that as we do this, that not only the fire of the Lord is with us and his Holy Spirit is with us, the favor, the blessing, and you get to see souls being saved, set free, healed, delivered. There's nothing better than that. And so I, I just think at this point, Mario, it's like, why focus on what the devil's up to? I mean, we're going to talk about it. We're always going to talk about it. But, you know, God is up to something so powerful. All I know is when I stand before the throne, and I know you know this, and, and, and anybody else who's watching this is a soul winner, we're going we're gonna to feel fulfilled and say, you know what, I did everything I could. And here I am. And I would never want to be that person, like you said, buries himself in a bunker and just waits to get raptured out. Because the deal is you're missing what the Lord said when he said he's with us until the end of the age. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. And so I think there's some people watching right now that are getting inspired by the Holy Spirit right now. And God has put something in your heart. And I just think it's go time. Now, of course, don't get ahead of God. You got to make sure it's the Holy Spirit. But I think some of you have been sitting on things for a long time. And some of it is risk. And I'm just going to tell you, sometimes you got to step out of the boat. Sometimes, you know, when it when it's Jesus saying it, when the Holy Spirit's saying it, you got to just do it. And if there's going to be a risk factor, but when it's something that God has said, that, you know, for you to do, he's going to bless it. Sometimes you got to go, uh, the vision comes before the provision. I know you know what I'm talking about, Mario. It, you know, look at what he's doing up there uh, in, in Tennessee at Mario's production. This is going to be a full-fledged production studio. I mean, we're going to be able to have a studio audience and I really believe this is how the gospel, Mario, is going to get to the ends of the earth, like the Bible says in the last days, you know? Yeah, one thing about it, we're not going to build a vanity empire in honor of a man. Everything we do has to have a practical use. I'm not worried about glamour or style. I'm worried about practicality and effectiveness. And that's all that matters. I, You know, I work from a military model, not from a Hollywood model. So... So I want to tell you a story about myself right now very quickly. And here is the massive breakthrough that I want to announce. Those of you that are, see the backdrop, that's Phoenix, Arizona. We had lost the Salt River Fields. And a lot of people said, Mario, you need to be gentle and sweet. But a lot of our people, our partners, they often will commend me. They say, you tell it like it is. Well, I try to because I believe the truth should be told. And I agree with Bonhoeffer. He said, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. And not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. And God will not hold you guiltless. So now what was done to us by the Salt River Fields, I believe, was evil. It was wrong. What they did, and, and for reasons that I can only suspect, have an animosity toward the Christian faith, they just canceled unilaterally without negotiation our contract. And we were out. And we were out after several weeks of ministry. And tens of thousands of dollars were spent on the streets handing out cards that were not going to be used anymore because we didn't have that venue. And how do you find something within a few weeks in a massive city like that where there's so much activity going on, spring training? There's not a night that Phoenix doesn't have. Every venue is used up all the time. And there was one that was so obvious and strategic that we didn't even consider it. Uh, it's like we assumed it wasn't available. And that was the fairgrounds, the Arizona State Fair. And so we went to them found out that April 21st through the 24th, the exact dates of our 10 crusade were available. So we asked them if we could rent it. 
they have to go through a, a lot of process. And every day the clock is ticking. I'm growing in anxiety and nervousness and I'm having no sleep. And I'm saying, God, you've got to rescue this situation. And the devil says, you don't belong in Phoenix. You got other cities to go to. But ladies and gentlemen, there's something about Phoenix that the devil doesn't like. And there's something about this city that the devil doesn't want us there. And that, you know, that's when I turn on. That's when my ghetto roots come up. You don't want me here. That means I belong here. So now you you went there and that's it. Now watch, Todd. I went through a dark night and I'm glad you're on screen and stay on, leave him on screen because we need to talk back and forth and I don't want to uh, have it just be lopsided here. But I prayed and I sought God and we had the contract, but it wasn't signed on their end. We had to have from their side Uh, uh, estimate of the cost in order to guarantee that we had the property for those dates. And guess what happened? The person in charge of that went on vacation. We had a Mm. few days left and last Friday night was the biggest Gethsemane of my life because Friday night was our deadline. I mean, Friday night, I was going to have to decide. We we don't have the fairgrounds. We're not going to do it. So it is midnight on Friday, and I'm in the prayer closet. And I begin to read from the uh, book Born for Battle about uh, missionary J.O. Frazier to the Laizu Indians in China. And he talked about how he came to a total point of darkness. I said, I'm there. He said, I was completely depressed. I said, I'm there. There's no hope. There's no glimmer. There's not even a pulse. There's nothing there. And then he said, I realized that all victories begin by a definite resistance against the devil at the foot of the cross. And he said that, and it exploded in me. And I said, God, I'm standing right here in my prayer room. There's no hope. This thing is lost. It's midnight. And I mean, their office is closed hours ago. And I said, in the name of Jesus, on the authority of the cross, I resist the devil in Phoenix right now. You know how much time went by? Three minutes. And my phone gives me a notification. And I'm looking at it. It's from Steve Brown, our media director. He says, I don't know how this happened, but the contract has just been sent over at midnight. Wow. Somebody stayed in the office at 10 p.m. their time to type out this thing and finish it. And it came through in the resistance of the cross. Say something, man. (laughs) Come on. Sometimes you got to get to the end of yourself. You know what I'm saying? And and there's, there's nothing else that could happen, but God, it has to be God area. I mean, to me, you know, the battle is not against flesh and blood strongholds and principalities. Something happened about bringing a tent into that battle zone and all of a sudden bring the glory of God, you know, allowing the Lord to move their miracle signs, wonders, soul winning. This, to me, this is strategic, Mario. We have the Arizona State Fairgrounds. We have over a thousand parking places. We're going to have free parking. We have we are in Phoenix itself, whereas before we were in Scottsdale. Now we're in the center. Right. This is like a promotion that came very painfully, but it's still a promotion. And I thank God for it. And and I think, too, that the, the wonderful thing that there are people watching right now who are in hopeless situations. They're in hopeless situations. And there's there's got to be a recognition that when we took the cross out of our preaching and the cross out of our doctrine oh. and we lost something very valuable, what makes the devil pack up and leave the cross? What is the thing that will create a a barrier between evil and you, the blood of Christ? These are messy doctrines. These are offensive doctrines. But folks, we don't care about branding. We're not trying to be stylish. We're trying to give you hope that in your current situation, God has a miracle for you. And it's going to turn around. But I'll tell you, you got to take a stand. Now, Todd, I want to ask you something. Yeah. You know, we 
we have faced uh, criticism for some of the things we've said. But haven't you noticed how if you tell the truth and you do it in love, that you'll, there'll, be, there'll be an attack on you. But in the end result, it's like what the Bible says in Proverbs. He who rebukes will in the end have more favor than he who flatters. And we found that to be true, haven't we? More than I can even express, you know, the battle when you when you go out there and you put everything on the line, but you know, you're doing the right thing. God has said to do this, but yet you're feeling opposition. You know, the worst thing, Mario, for me in the ministry, and I'm sure you could probably say the same friendly. They call it friendly fire. Right. And and people will rip you to shreds that are other believers, other ministries. And, you know, anyway, we went through all these different things. And so I was trying to be an investigative journalist and, you know, a pastor and all the different things at the same time. And, and you did this ex- extremely powerful thing, Mario, where you, you really went out on the limb for the body of Christ. And I don't think many people realize that you heard from the Lord to do that. And, and they didn't see the back, you know, what was going on behind the scenes. But right. to your point, it's been a couple of years now and the Lord has honored the obedience. And I think that the folks, for the most part, many people have come to see, you know what? It wasn't a bad intention. It wasn't a bad motive. It was actually, they were speaking truth, you know, so we're not doing a victory lap here, but the deal is, is that to your point, there's something right. said about this to that. I think we all need, because the times that are coming, the 10 people that I know Mario would have backed out at that point. I mean, it was so heavy, the warfare, you and I wanted yeah. a couple of calls. I mean, it was crazy, but you were determined and you knew that God was with you. And what, what's happened now, a bigger venue, a better venue. I believe this is going to be probably the most powerful crusade yet. I believe people are going to come in from all over the country because what's happening right now is this: there's a momentum from the Spirit of God behind this. Even though it affects Phoenix and Arizona, this is going to affect regions. This is going to, so people are going to come in from other places around the country. And this is the type of thing that's happening. When a move of God happens, we're seeing it here in Nashville, and I'm not, I take zero credit for this. The only thing that I can say is I've been obedient in, in, in saying yes to the Lord and showing up. But I take zero credit for what God's doing. But when, when something starts happening in the spirit, people come from other places because they want to be in the presence of God. And I believe this Phoenix crusade, Mario, I'm telling you, buckle up. Uh, yeah. It's going to be greater. It's going to be amazing. Wonders, I think. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, the stories coming from our team on the streets. There was a young woman. Uh, she wasn't wearing much clothes. She was pregnant. And she didn't even know she was cold because she was so high on fentanyl. Here she's with child. And our workers prayed for her. But obviously we put, we wrapped her up in clothing and, and uh, they took her in. Our workers are on the streets of Phoenix and there's a human tragedy unfolding in Phoenix. Hmm. And, but I'm telling you, the army of God is right now on drugs in the streets. They're prostitutes, they're drug addicts, they're hopeless. They've got no future. They're homeless. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to turn them into the army of God. And and that's already happening. Now we know why the devil resisted us. But boy, I'll tell you what, it woke up the church in Phoenix. It woke them up. I mean, they have rallied to our side. The devil gave us, uh, for all the money we lost, uh, Salt River Fields gave us a lot of free advertising because of what they did to us. And God has used it for his glory. But I want to give this uh, statement here, Todd. I want to get your your take on this. Isaiah 60, verse 1, gives us an insight, a roadmap to how we should be acting right now, Todd. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But here's the word, but. But the Lord will rise, arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. We're going to have great perversion and great glory. And we have got to understand that those who deny the greatness of the perversion are living in denial. But those who succumb to the fear of the darkness that is coming are also in denial of the promise of the glory that will rise upon us. So the secret is to get busy for God. The secret to depression and fear and lack is to get busy for God. Now, (laughs) speaking of getting busy for God, you would think the Lord would give me a break. 
I'd say, God, <laughs> all right, I bought the land. I built the warehouse. I went into Phoenix. I met the devil face to face. We won. And then on top of that all, we are producing a motion picture to be in theaters. We literally are doing that. And this film that we're producing right now is about three individuals that were healed in our tent. And it's the story of their healing. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a weapon to touch millions of people in movie theaters. I believe it. And how we're going to do it is amazing. God told me to do it. I said, I can't believe we can do this. So we started MMM Films. And the production has already started with the wonderful help of some very gifted people. And uh, we have a trailer. And I never, you know, did you ever think I would re release a movie trailer? I mean, folks. I've been telling what you it's going to happen. I just. Yeah, you yeah. warned me. But, 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 and let's run that movie trailer right now. And all of a sudden, God said, that was for you. And I want you to get a tent and you'll see miracles. I was like, this tent thing, what is this? No, this is not for me. This, this is all fake. No, I'm not doing this. He wasn't living, he was existing. When I first met Steve, he was hunched over in a lot of pain. You know, I was, I really got hooked on the meds. I did try taking my life with the pills. He just seemed like he was in pain all the time. He walked into the tent and he encountered a miracle that continues to blow all of our minds. In this room, diseases will start to be healed in people's body. Next thing I know, I'm shaking. I didn't even realize but I'm standing straight up and down and I didn't have any pain. I looked at everybody in the row like, please somebody tell me what's happening here. Steve was just a whole brand new human being. Like, it was a miracle. One characteristic of the outpouring of the Spirit, or what we call revival, is that it's not the end. It's just the beginning. God is getting His people ready. God is getting His people ready. I mean, you know what I love about this is, from some of our critics and people that don't believe miracles are still happening today, they believe they stopped. Uh, this answers that, Mario. And um, I love that you're showing verifiable proof from doctors and people that have their lives have been changed from a miracle that took place. And uh, you know, you know my story. I got stabbed nine times, one in the heart. My life is a miracle. So when anybody says miracles aren't happening, I beg to differ because I shouldn't even be here. You know, but. You've witnessed so many miracles over the years. I've witnessed many miracles, and God is in the miracle working business. And so I'm just thankful that he put this on your heart to document what has been happening at MMM, you know? Think about the fact that in the beginning of that trailer was Bree on the ground screaming. She had a body that had declared war on itself, was cannibalizing herself. She had gone, she's five foot ten. And she got, went down to 94 pounds. And when this thing gripped her that was destroying her intestines and her whole body and caused her to be in a wheelchair and, and not be able to move around and, and just skin and bones. And uh, she started screaming and I walked over to the side. The power of God came on me and I spoke a word. You talk about giving God all the glory. I've never felt more unworthy in my life. The other is, is Stephen, uh, Steve Collins, who his spine made him a hostage in his home for seven years. Seven years he had no life until that moment that he was convinced that he could leave his house and stand in that tent and, and God healed him. Two of the three people, Bree and Stephen, there's a third story that's just as amazing, but we're, we're, we're going to be holding off on that because we're going to build a new trailer. But they, neither one of them were Christians at the moment of their healing. Wow. And medical professionals are going to go on record in this documentary talking about the miraculous power of God healing these people. Now, 
I'm not saying what I'm about to say. I'm not saying it's going to happen. It's what I want to happen. You know that, uh, Todd, that our ministry has been capable of doing something amazing, and that's building a volunteer army. Sometimes we've had as many as 1,500 volunteers come to a tent crusade. Well, now that volunteer army is going to multiply. And what my hope is, and try to imagine this, folks, in major theaters in the United States, a full-length film where at the end of it, I'm praying for the sick in the theater to be healed and saved. And imagine what could happen if if we're allowed to put this in the theaters and demonstrate the reality of the healing power of God. Two things are going to happen. One is I believe God is going to heal people in places we never imagined that God's healing power could flow. Second is there's going to be a firestorm. We're going to make people so mad. And I realize that. And Jesus has taught us that he sent us forth as lambs before wolves. So what do I want you as an audience to do? I'm not asking for money right now. I will later, but not right now. I'm going to ask you to pray for us. Pray for our tent crusades. Pray for the Friday night meetings that Todd is doing now in Hendersonville. Pray for our tent crusade. Pray for this film. And pray for this new building that is the first of other buildings that we're going to be putting up in this soul-winning machine that we're building in Tennessee. And finally, and I said it three times just in one sentence, this city behind me, Phoenix, Arizona, is about to be touched on a massive scale. And if you want to volunteer, go to my website, mariomarillo.org, and volunteer to join us in Phoenix. Do I have to sell you on what's going to happen? Nope. I think the devil has done the best sales job of all. He said, there's no way I can allow this tent crusade to happen. And he has been defeated and he's failed and it's going to happen. So now here we go. Pray, register to be a part of the army that's going to be in Phoenix. Be one of the volunteers in Jesus name. Talk about Friday night as well. What are you expecting next Friday to happen in the, your new facility? We're excited about Friday. We have no idea what to expect, but we're coming expectant, and we're just going to get out of the way and allow the Holy Spirit to move. And, you know, Mario, a lot of people say, well, you know, you had the grand opening there. The numbers are going to go down. I'm not expecting that. I believe that folks are going to come. But, you know what, regardless, I, I, I'm not worried about it because whoever comes is the right group. And, you know, here's the thing is that we're in a, an incredible time. To be alive this this may be the church's greatest hour that we're walking into right now and so i have some things happen in me mario and uh, i know many folks that are watching it's the same thing They're, you know revival starts in our heart and you know I, I just feel the presence of the lord so strong and i i just feel so hopeful people say why are you hopeful it's like the worst time in the world maybe maybe but i just I, there's always hope in jesus christ there's joy that's available there's peace that's available. We are not citizens of this world. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but it is time to rise up, to stand up, to walk in the anointing of the Holy Spirit and to trust the Lord more than you've ever trusted him before. And I just pray blessing and favor over you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for every mama that's watching this broadcast right now. I thank you to everyone that's been praying for your son, your daughter. Mario mentioned fentanyl. He mentioned different things that some of your kids might be on. They may be wayward. They may be in total rebellion. But we're believing that the reason why we're still here is that God is not done moving. He is moving right now about the earth. And we are going to get in line with his Holy Spirit. We're going to walk in the anointing, the unction of the Spirit of God, the joy and the peace that he has to offer. And these prodigals are coming home in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.